hi guys welcome back to my channel my name is karijat adishola and i talk in my channel i talk about women midwifery midwives and midwifery related exams so today i'm having my first ep the first episode of my uh midwifery beyond the continent today i'll be talking about migration to migrating to canada as an internationally educated midwife what you need to know and how to go about it so if this is your first time in my channel please please kindly like share and comment under this video if you would like me to talk about a particular country you would like to migrate to as a midwife and you don't know about it and uh, you need full details or full information including the links uh the website and everything you need to apply as an internationally educated midwife to a particular country please mention that country in the comment section and i'm going to talk about it in my next video so today i'll be talking about migrating to canada as an in as a, a midwife registered in abroad that is you are not registered in canada you schooled in other country aside um other country and you would like to work in canada as a midwife then this video is for you <laughs> so uh, i'll be talking about the internationally educated midwifery uh bridging program for canadian for canada and um, before i start i want you to know that if you are a midwife you are a global stranger. If you are a need midwife, you are needed globally. According to the uh, State of the World's uh, Midwifery Report 2021, it said that currently 900,000 midwives are needed globally. Meaning, 900,000 more midwives are needed globally. Meaning, uh, you we still need more midwives globally and if you're in a country where you have not been adequately remunerated or for any reason you want to try uh working as a midwife in another country they, and you've been considering like uh canada you don't know about it then this information is for you if you're a midwife in nigeria specifically and you have over five years of clinical experience as a midwife you've been working actively as a midwife supporting women assisting in delivery intrapartum postpartum and um, pregnancy period and you can actually prove that you can you you should try applying to the iembp programs or program for canada then you may just be lucky to be part of the candidates they will pick for the next section so today uh, i'll be talking about the process what you need to do and all that so the first criteria is that you are a registered midwife with a recognized body so in whatever country you are you must be registered as a midwife with a, rec with a recognized body meaning if you are in nigeria you must be registered with the nursing and midwifery council of nigeria if you are in uk you must be registered with uh the nursing and midwifery council of uk if you are in ireland you must be registered with ireland board of nursing and midwife as a midwife not as a nurse not as a doctor not as an obstetrician or gynecologist for you to work as a midwife in the in the in canada you must be registered as a midwife and you must have uh, undergone a midwifery educator educational program in an accredited accredited institution you must have had a midwifery educational program in an accredited institution so meaning there if you have or uh, a midwifery certificate and you have gotten that in an institution that is not recognized in the particular country that you have then you will not be considered uh you cannot apply for midwifery or uh, program in canada then another thing is at least you must have had at least 24 months of midwifery educational program or at least one one year of midwifery educational program as a post basic course meaning if you are a registered nurse and registered midwife in nigeria you can apply you've done your basic nursing uh for three years and you went to get your um 
post basic midwifery free as a team month course then you can apply for this program then after meeting this criteria the next thing for you to do now is to do your credential evaluation you have to submit your evaluation to the west uh world education service canada they are going to evaluate your credentials as a few so uh canada have their own standard that they've set so if they evaluate your credential if it meets the uh standard of the canadian government then uh you proceed to the next stage of the application now if you go to the west uh world education service Canada website, you will see the information on what documents you actually need to provide for them to be able to evaluate your credential. And don't forget to tell them that they should send a cost by cost evaluation or cost by cost your cost by cost evaluation to the internationally educated midwife or program midwife bridging program office in University of Columbia. And for course by course evaluation of credential, it's actually about one sixty dollars. Now another thing is that if you are not from a an from an English speaking country, you will need to provide a uh, English provi uh, proficiency certificate, and that is a uh, IELTS, high E L T S. And you must have minimum of 7.0 in all the criteria and an overall band score of 7 as the minimum. So for you to prove that you are uh, proficient in English language, you have to pass your ISS with minimum of 7.0 in each of the criteria. If you are not from an English speaking country originally, but you've lived in an english speaking country like uk uh, uk ireland south africa jamaica for minimum of four years four years working as a midwife there then you don't need to prove the uh your english proficiency again so you will not be required to write an hiatus so this particular one like that it's for nurses that have migrated to the uk as a midwife or as, uh, in from nigeria and they are now working in the uk as a midwife for over four years then they would not need to prove their proficiency in english again so they wouldn't be required to write the ifcs exam, exams but if you are not if you are an not from an english-speaking country you live in an english-speaking country and you've not been working as a midwife in that particular country for the last five years you cannot apply for this program you do not meet the eligibility criteria so if you've done all of this you are educated as a midwife you have your registration you register as a midwife and you or you have your license you you've uh, gone through an a midwifery educational program for minimum of 24 months or or in three months whichever applicable to you and you have had your you can put your credential together to be evaluated by the wes if your credential meets the criteria then you will not need to do um any examination before you will be admin, uh, admitted into the program. But if you are uh, your credentials have your credentials have been evaluated and it does not meet the standard set by the uh, by them, then you will need to do a uh, to write some test like a written and an OSCE like test. Just like you want to work in UK that we do the CBT cbt test and the uh, oski test you will be needing to do that before you will be administered admitted into the program excuse me so if after the evaluation you've done that if you have that after the evaluation you require to write this exam you have to travel to canada to write this exam just like when you are writing the oski oski is only done in the uk so you have to travel down to uk to write the exam they will set a date for you if you've missed the criteria you've done every other thing and it's only that test that is remaining for you they will communicate the dates that you will likely go for the test exam for you 
Then for you to be admitted into this program, you don't really need to have a visa, a visa before then. Once you have been admitted, you will be given a letter that will use to apply for visa. So you, for anybody doing this program in Canada, they either have a work visa, permanent residency, or they are already having their, they already had their uh, citizenship. So people that do not have the right to live or work in Canada cannot, uh, cannot be admitted into this program. Then now the payment of this program, this program is for like a. Uh, eight to ten months and the eight to ten months is divided into three terms you have to pay for each term at when the time is like you, are, you you can't pay it's not that they ask you to pay all the money at it at a goal you pay per term and the first term co uh, payment is less than one thousand five dollars the application fee is about five hundred dollars and uh, the first term fee is like a uh, one thousand two fifty dollars the link for all this information the links on uh you can click on to get all this information will be posted right under this video the email address of um, high mbp program office in the uh, university of british columbia will also be posted you need their, their phone number or address it will also be posted under this video if you are already in Canada, you've been uh, you've been qualified as a midwife in another country, and you've not started working as a midwife. You can actually go for this program. So for any for any internationally educated midwife to work in Canada, you have to do the bridging program for nine months, uh, for eight to ten months depending. And the bridging bridging program um, consists of both clinical classes. Um, hospital experience online classes physical classes and all that so because of the pandemic the online uh the 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 way the class has been scheduled has already been uh, like uh modified due to the pandemic so they do have some online courses which you can be done which you can do wherever in the world as well so um i think this is all the information you need uh what is it that i've not said regarding this so the monetary aspect for the total cost of this everything till you finish is about ten thousand canadian ten thousand dollars most likely going to be the the canadian dollars anyway if you need more information you can email them for clarification or anything but before you email them make sure you or you meet the eligibility criteria then you can also you can also uh, read that on their website. So is this information beneficial to you? Do you need more clarification? I'm going to put links on how you, where you can get information here or uh, under this video. Do you want me to talk about another country or uh, working as a midwife in another country? Please do let me know. And this information is applicable to everybody, not educated in canada except there are some schools so there are some colleges in u.s that are recognized by the canadian government but most other countries you have to go through this process you have to have your credentials evaluated another thing is information you need is that you need to prove uh you need a certificate of pro uh, good conduct from a recognized organization or from a government um department so you have to provide all this information and you providing all this information does not guarantee that they are going to give you the admission because it's actually a competitive thing and lots of people are actually doing this uh submit the, submitting their application for consideration and uh the they increase the intake to twice a year and for this year now, the intake have closed, I guess. Okay, for this year, the intake has closed. Then for 2023 academic section, their first intake will be going in by October 2022. But the application for that have closed. You can look towards uh, the second section, which is uh, January 2023. So you can submit your application at any time around the year. But they will put you based on the uh your admission will be either uh the first one which is for this year is like october for 2023 academic section is october and uh 
January. So if you need more information, you can actually click on the links I'll be posting under this video. If this video is beneficial to you, please, 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 please kindly like, share, and comment. Thank you. See you in my next videos. So rate, please, 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 please rate my video as well, as well, as well. My speaking, I'm not from an English speaking country. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying as well. So I'm, I'm from Nigeria and uh, Nigeria is not considered as an English speaking country as uh, exactly. So you have to write your ISS to prove that you can actually speak English fluent. You understand English fluently. Yeah. So, the next thing is for you to like, comment, share, and subscribe to my channel, please. <laughs> if you are not from an English-speaking country, I think the first thing you need to do is to get an IELTS done. Because that may be a little bit difficult for you to get the required band. So, you should at least have that. If you have that, then submit your credential and all that then you go from there so canada needs you other country needs you as well as a midwife so please and please like comment share and subscribe to my channel thank you see you in my next episode of midwifery beyond hey continent thank you